Hello and welcome to the Global Church Project. I'm Graham Hill. David Rowe focuses on emerging Christian leadership in China. After graduating from Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary, he pastored for a few years in Boston before moving to East Asia to reach urban intellectuals and students. He launched an educational consulting company in Beijing and has lived in China for almost 10 years. He visits China frequently and is a leading mobiliser for young Christian leaders and churches in urban China. David Rose serves as the director of the J. Christie Wilson Mission Centre at Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. He's the international deputy director for the Lausanne movement in East Asia. David Rowe, welcome to the Global Church Project. You work at Gordon Conwell Seminary and are involved heavily with Lausanne. Can you tell us something about your roles in both those places? Yes, I'm uh, the director of the Christie Wilson Center for World Missions here at Gordon Conwell, and we have lots of mission programs throughout the year for students. Um, so I'm involved in on campus uh, mentoring, teaching, and uh, just uh, being part of the program here. But uh, also, I'm involved with the Lausanne Movement, and the Lausanne mm. Movement is primarily a global movement of leaders uh, shaping mm. the future direction of the church in the area of world missions. And so, my area of responsibility is over the region of East Asia, mm. and especially China, since that's where I mm. lived for about nine years. Mm. Why are you passionate about mission and ministry in East Asia and in China in particular? Well, the Chinese church is uh, on the rise right now, and mm. especially with the economy and its world influence, the church is also growing very fast, and they're about mm. to have a global impact. And they're, the Chinese leaders are coming together. They're planning for a Mission China 2030. They want to send out 20,000 missionaries mm. uh, in the next 15 years. Mm. So that's their long-term goal. They also want to do a lot of church planting in the cities of China, as well mm. as reach cross-culturally within China. Mm. So there is a, a growing mission movement taking place right now. Mm. We hear a lot about the expansion and the growth of the church in China. What are some of the things that you are noticing about the church in China today? What are some of the things that you think the church in China can teach the churches of the West today? Well, the church in China has gone through a very um, difficult time in the past, and it's coming out of that. And so, so some of the suffering and some of the hardships they've gone through actually have been very mm -hmm. good preparation for this mission movement. Mm -hmm. And so what I believe they can teach the, the church globally is this uh, being able to grow the church under very difficult circumstances and be able to really thrive and then even to be outreaching and being able to um, be missional. So. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of their sacrificial living and just their experience of the cross, they really identify with Christ on the cross. Those are lessons mm -hmm. that uh, we can learn from the Chinese church. Mm -hmm. They want to go to very difficult places uh, in the world to, to serve, and um, that's where I really admire these Chinese Christians mm -hmm. and their passion and vision for them. Mm -hmm. Do you see Chinese evangelicals seeking fresh ways to, to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to Chinese people today? Well, um, Chinese people today are really looking for something. Uh, mm. they, they just see such corruption going on within the country. There's so much uh, uh, materialism and poverty and, and, and every all the social evils of capitalism mm. have mm. actually entered into China. So they, they're, they're looking for something that has a deeper mm. meaning um, significance in life, but truth. Uh, I think there, there, there's that, that empty hole in, the, in mm. the Chinese heart. So when the gospel in its pure form comes in, mm. and when Christians live out the gospel, um, people's eyes just open up and say, mm. wow, there's something different here. Yeah. So um, it's not something fresh other than just bringing in the essence of what yeah. the gospel's about. Yeah. What do you see as some of the challenges for the church, churches of China today? Well, multiple challenges. Uh, of course, there's uh, <coughs> dealing with a lot of the, um, the secular, globalized world coming into China, and mm. so a lot of the young people are being drawn into this new materialism. Um, uh, the urban cities are full of people working uh, seven days a week often, mm. and 12 hours mm. a day, just really busy, busy people. Mm. So they're, they're, they're dealing with a transition also from the rural to the urban, uh, that kind of transition just changes the whole 
um, uh, scheduling and just the mindset of a Chinese. To, so some of the challenges is just trying to find time mm. uh, for for God or time time mm. for church or, or spiritual matters. Um, but challenges also the fact that you know there there's a society there that's been sort of mm. anti-Christian in the past, um, and so. Uh, there's an there's an environment where it's not too favorable. It's not it's not like mm. the past. It's always being opened up, but uh, it's it's sometimes hard when the church begins to grow and have some kind of impact. Usually, there's a, a knock on the door um, mm. saying maybe you might know, might need to move or you might need to shrink or you got to figure out another way of doing yeah. church. Yeah, yeah. And how do you find uh, Chinese churches responding to these challenges? Well, I you know, just want to say that China is very diverse, and there's many other mm. regions where the churches got large uh, growth, and even uh, the official churches uh, having ten thousand people worshiping on Sundays. And so mm. there's uh, there's open church, and then there's also the house church that's meeting mm. more and smaller uh, groups. And so uh, challenges are all different from each of the those yeah. different groups. Now, yeah. the house church challenge primarily is finding space. You know, mm. and, and just a legal way to operate without you know, feeling the pressure from, from mm. but from the, the three self the, the official church uh, their challenges is trying they have a lot of people coming to church on Sundays um, but trying to really bring discipleship and mentoring and, and growing people mm. in, in, a, in a deeper way with the Lord um, finding spiritual uh, life on a on an individual basis. Those are some of the challenges, maybe mm. for the, the, the official church, but both churches uh, are thriving and growing in China. Mm, interesting. And do you find that the Christian church is making a bigger impact in rural areas, or in major cities with urban intellectuals and professional people? Where do, where do we see the church impacting Chinese culture today? Well, the church grew very fast in the rural uh, communities in the 80s, right after uh, Deng Xiaoping came into power and opened up China. So the, the, the rural Christians grew fast in the 80s and early 90s. Mm. But more recently, um, in the 90s, in the last 10 to uh, 15 years, that we've seen the ch urban mm. church grow, especially mm. among intellectuals, uh, many uh, college students and young professionals uh, all have been really seeking the Lord and coming to Christ and coming mm -hmm. to church. These urban churches all across China in different cities are all growing in the, mm -hmm. in the intellectual. So we see both. And then the rural communities have moved to the cities. And so you have both a combination of rural Christians mm -hmm. growing in the cities as well as urban mm -hmm. intellectuals. Mm -hmm. But the city seems to be where mm -hmm. the, the movement is taking place mm -hmm. the fastest. Mm -hmm. Now globally we see the rise and rise of Chinese influence on so many different areas. Of society. How do you see the Chinese churches, uh, both in the way they do church, the way they do theology, how do you see them beginning to influence global Christian conversations today? Yeah, well, right now they're uh, more at a learning stage. They're coming mm. to global conferences just to observe and learn. Uh, from what has been taking outside of China, because they seem to have been, um, they say, been detached from the global church for the last 60 years, and so mm. this is sort of a reattachment. So, at this stage, they're not coming with a agenda to teach the world; mm. they're coming more of a, a learning posture. Yeah. But if there were something that I can say from the outside, as I have observed, as much as they're learning, they have a lot to teach. Yeah. You know, and I think it, it really comes with their their passion for God and mm. the willingness to go all the way for God. Mm. They have a fearlessness, a, a courageous spirit that mm. comes out of this environment they've been, uh, uh, this difficult environment. So I mm. think that courage that they have is something mm. that many of us can learn from the West and from around the world. Mm. Can you think of some examples or stories of courage and fearlessness that have really caught your attention that will illustrate how that looks on the ground? Well, many stories, yeah. uh, <laughs> but uh, there's one story maybe uh, I just remember um, there's one church where on uh, uh, when they had decided to move into a public space uh, to rent, and this would have been a, a huge step for that. This mm -hmm. would be a house church uh, moving from the homes into a more open space, and this would mm -hmm. 
uh, in some sense challenge the current uh, bottom line of what would be accepted. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, that Saturday, uh, sure enough, there was um, some pressure that came through. And then on Sunday, uh, same, similar. But uh, the young people in that church, it was very interesting. Um, and they felt that they really need to stand with the church leadership and mm -hmm. really, instead of backing down, and these are young people in their 20s and 30s, really mm -hmm. uh, stood with the church. Of course, in the end, um, they... Um, um, some of them saw some of the, you know, uh, some pressure taking place among mm -hmm. their, in their homes and in, in their workplace and in, in the, uh, in the universities and so on where they're studying. Mm -hmm. uh, people come and pressure them not to go to this church, mm -hmm. but in the end they decided to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's just uh, stories like that, and and each person is going through the normal pressures of life. Mm -hmm. On top of that, just attending mm -hmm. this church is is got another. Yeah. Uh, some people may have to lose their jobs or yeah. even get kicked out of their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the costs involved with just committing to this church. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think is most misunderstood about the Chinese church today, when Westerners think about the Chinese church? Well, Westerners probably have a, this mindset that church is being persecuted and uh, and it's under attack. And and although that. There's some truth to that, I think, uh, and that they need to be pitied, they need to be, um, uh, you know, really handheld, and, and we did definitely need to pray for them during very mm -hmm. difficult times, but I think that that's not the message that the Chinese church wants to portray. In fact, they, mm -hmm. they feel like that is a f uh, previous era when the church really did go through suffering, mm -hmm. um, and so they would not want to call their church a, a persecuted church. Yeah. Is it a church... That has pressure. Well, sure, it does, mm -hmm. and 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 so they would want to see a church that has overcome uh, some of those uh, hardships and really trying mm -hmm. to live out the gospel mm -hmm. in a very. In fact, the biggest challenge of the church is not the the political environment. The mm -hmm. biggest challenge really is is the attack of uh, from the materialistic world, yeah. and and so yeah. it's the young people being drawn into. Um, this globalized uh, society full of t uh, you know, choosing between um, the movies and going to church mm. is, is probably a harder uh, battle that they mm. have to figure mm. uh, rather than um, choosing between mm. the, you know, um, the suffering. So that's, that would mm. be a, a very interesting thing to see the Chinese church uh, go through this season of trying to uh, battle materialism mm. you know, and the temptations of the world. Mm. I think that's probably no different from what we experience outside of China as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it'd be interesting to see as societies like China become more involved in global culture, um, how churches respond to that dynamic and the challenges that are faced in that context. Do you see churches in urban settings finding fresh ways to communicate with new, wealthy Chinese urban intellectuals? Yeah, the, the wealthy intellectuals are actually looking and coming to church and they're, they're, they're being drawn to uh, this new faith that's entered the cities. Um, many of them are very wealthy now and they're mm. driving in very nice cars to church. Mm. Um, and so, but there, these wealthy uh, individuals are, are really seeking for something of meaning. Mm. And so uh, they are being drawn to, to what the church has got mm. to offer. So I, I think this is a, re even it's interesting now, very recently, even some, you know, movie stars and, and even government officials mm. and um, CEOs, uh, marketplace folks, uh, uh, very accomplished people as well, of course, quietly coming mm. uh, and they're just observing some coming to Christ and some in private faith, and mm. some have to be very careful because they you know a public uh, presence may jeopardize uh, some of their work and mm. so on but uh, uh, it's coming and entering mainstream uh, mm. society so before it used to be more in the fringes uh, mm. that Christianity reached the the rural first and and mm -hmm. even when it entered the cities, it reached more the academic world, the students. Uh, but now it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's branching out into 
uh, business and to the media and to government and to mm. other sectors of society. Mm. So it's a good, a good, uh, good balance uh, to see how the church mm. begins to grow in those areas. I want to ask you a question about Chinese mission as well. How are Chinese Christians exploring mission today, both in the context of China and in the region and further afield? Well, there's a great need within China first. As, mm. as you know, there's over 1.2 billion people who still uh, do not know Christ. And so mm. there's a great need to, to grow the church within China. So they're, mm. one of the first things that they do want to do in missions is to plant more churches, especially in the cities, mm. uh, as they see where the migration of people are moving toward the cities. So, so uh, they want to see you know, five, at least 5,000 churches planted in the next 15 years. Mm. That's one of their mm. mission uh, visions. Uh, but um, within China and in the cities are many um, people groups coming to the mm. city, nations around, um, not just international, uh, uh, those from around the world, but you know, minority groups within China um, are in uh, all areas of the cities, and so, but also in the countryside as well. So they definitely want to do mm. missions and reaching out to minority people groups. Um, but they also realize China is situated in a very unique uh, place where there is a great need for the gospel surrounding the country. Mm. And so especially going westward from China, uh, going through Central Asia to the Middle East, there's this back to Jerusalem yes. direction movement yeah. of interest. And so they are mm. really wanting to send missionaries in that direction. Mm. Uh, they've already been doing that, but also not just westward, but southeast mm. and southwest. There's mm. much need, a lot of people groups in Southeast Asia uh, going southward. Mm. Uh, mm. North, you have, of course, Mongolia. And, but uh, going east, actually, is North Korea mm. and so uh, in Japan. So, you know, you have China going to go in all, all four directions, yeah. uh, sending out young people mm. to, these, to these regions. And you talked about the vision for the multiplication of churches, so 5,000 churches, I think you said. What is the particular strategy that's being applied uh, is there a particular strategy uh, or is it just developing leaders and releasing them into church planting how's that working out well there's multiple strategies that are taking place mm. and, and of course there's not one strategy that's going to mm. be all-encompassing uh, I do know that uh, at least uh, um, several different leaders who have different ways of doing things mm. but I think there's an overall vision to see mm. that many churches planted with different mm. ways of doing it mm. there would be uh, the multi-site model for some who have uh, a stronger pastor and they would like to expand that uh, into mm. different cities uh, one church with m multiple campuses you can say mm. uh, but another strategy of course would just to be raising up Church, younger church planters, and just sending them out to all the different, mm. uh, you know, cities, and mm. and seeing churches within those cities begin to plant churches within their own region. So yeah. it'll be a combination of many different kinds of, mm. of church planting. I think uh, there's one pastor who has very unique uh, vision. His vision, the reason why five thousand was mm. the number, was because he had a vision to see a church plant in every single uh, subway stop. Um, in, in China, and he estimated mm -hmm. about 5,000 subway stops. So if, you, if a church is in every <laughs> single subway stop, you kinda, yeah. uh, that would be uh, one, one model. But that's yeah. just, you know, uh, one of the pastors of vision in, in planting churches. Mm. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say to us today about the church in China or the churches of East Asia? Yes, uh, I just feel that um, uh, what's happening in China is this really... A, uh, exciting movement of God mm. and it's probably in my my just sense is that that in our generation probably going to be the fastest growing church mm. and mission movement mm. uh, that we will see mm. uh, it'll take um, you know several more decades to flesh out how it looks mm. but it'll definitely continue to grow the church mm. uh, will continue to multiply and send and uh, this would be a great time for Christians outside of China to really see how we can partner and, mm. and be involved with this movement, but also learn from it too as well. Mm. 
and uh, you'll see Chinese people coming into our cities and buying up you know houses and, and going to the shopping malls but very likely we'll, we'll see Chinese churches uh, and Chinese missionaries uh, start to head outside of China mm. and will impact uh, even in the West so we'll, we'll, we're seeing a growing mm. Chinese church here even in North America for example mm. and we'll see that all around the world so yeah. the Chinese people will start to grow now it's a very young church a uh, very vibrant church and uh, full of, I'm sure, mistakes like any other mm. mission movement <laughs> that will c expand in the early days in the West as well as the Korean church uh, in the last, uh, you know, uh, 30 years. But uh, the Chinese church will make its mistakes as well. Mm. But uh, be gracious towards the Chinese because they, they really have uh, the, the true essence of the gospel. And that's I'm, why I'm excited about this movement. I'm giving my life to this and seeing Mm. this movement really continue in its expansion. Of course, mm. God is the one who's doing it all, and we praise mm. God for that. What are some practical ways that we can learn more about the Chinese church today and also concretely partner with the Chinese church today? Well, concrete ways. Well, one thing that um, I think the Chinese church really appreciates uh, from outside is the they have seen many missionaries who have come through China and have have laid down their lives. You know, starting all the way from Robert Morris and Hudson Taylor days, and they remember uh, China Inland Mission and uh, the thousands of missionaries that came out and and moved to very difficult places. Um, and many brought their wives and kids and husbands and and buried them in China. So mm -hmm. they, there's that sacrificial missionary spirit that they've seen mm -hmm. from the outside. And there is a temptation to think, well, now that the Chinese church has it all, you know, mm -hmm. we don't need to send any more missionaries. Let's just let mm -hmm. the locals uh, do the rest of the work. Um, I think w that would probably be an overcorrection because what the Chinese church would like to see is not them doing the hard the work now, but just to, to join together mm. with those outside of China yeah. in this mission movement, yeah. so that it would be, you know, walking hand in hand in that. So, it, mm. you know, going, let's say, going westward toward uh, back to Jerusalem area, it would be great mm. still to see um, missionaries from around the world there, not just the, not mm. just from China, mm. and that that would be a great encouragement. But secondly. Um, not just sending our young people, which is part of uh, the example, is that there is something about, uh, we have, especially in the West, certain expertise that we may mm -hmm. have. And we have, you know, already a couple centuries of history, of mission history, that mm -hmm. uh, we can build upon. Um, mm -hmm. The theological and missiological thought that has been, you know, been uh, generated through many, many years in, um, of experience and mm. uh, research and so on. Those are all very valuable information. Mm. Um, the lessons that were learned from the West uh, and from Korea, the good and bad lessons and the, the hard ones, the, all those uh, the historical lessons, those are things, uh, the strategies that are working that have uh, uh, also have not worked. Those are all very valuable things that the Chinese church could use for mm. its mission movement. Mm. And that's why they're learning. They, they, they realize that to, to do ministry in China, they may know more than missionaries, but especially when it comes to cross-cultural ministry and mm. sending, uh, they have a lot to learn. Mm. And so uh, I think there's, that's where we would have far more uh, to offer and um, partner with them in that mm. area. David Rowe, thank you for joining us at the Global Church Project. Thank you. The Global Church Project is located at www.theglobalchurchproject.com. On our website, you'll find a wide range of interviews and resources for colleges, universities, and churches. I look forward to your company next time. From me, goodbye.